Our next question, Jim, was sent in to Corny Drive through at gmail.com from Grady Elliott, a man who always uses his left and right turn indicators, according to this email. <laughs> this is about something you've brought up several times recently. On episode four of Smoky Mountain Wrestling, at the 25 minute mark, Hollywood Bob Holly does an interview about how he was driving down the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles and Jack Nicholson waved him down at a traffic light <laughs> to ask Hollywood why he was in the wrestling business instead of being a big time movie star. Hollywood Bob responded that while he could easily be a big shot movie star, he likes beating people up for a living. My favorite part is when Bob pauses during his story to tell the fans, yeah, Jack calls me Hollywood because he knows who I am. Previously on the drive-thru, you told the story about how Paul Heyman waved you over in the WCW <laughs> locker room to tell you about how Jack Nicholson approached him at the China Club in New York City to ask him about his angle on TV. I'm not sure of the timing, but my question was this. Was Hollywood Bob Holly's promo inspired by this story? And did Jim help him come up with that interview? Or was Jack Nicholson just the go-to star at that time for a Hollywood type of reference? Any memorable stories about Bob Holly from the Smoky Mountain days? He was my favorite wrestler in the WWF growing up because he reminded me so much of my dad. Oh, yes, that was directly uh, related to, as in, yes, I <laughs> told Bob every single word to say. And uh, here was the thing. <clears throat> um Hollywood, Bob Holly, and plus I had just been actually out in Los Angeles. Sandy Scott and I had been out uh, talking to Ruben, Rick Ruben, about what we were doing and some of the first TV tapings and et cetera. And that's when he had taken us to this club off the Sunset Strip there, right? So, I've, so we're standing around and we're doing the promos, and I want to give Bob a, a little promo. I'm trying to push him. So he he was never really involved in an angle per se because he just started and, and did some matches to get over and had some promos. And he didn't have live promos. He had pre-taped promos usually because Bob had never done television before. Anyway, he'd done jobs on WCW TV. Um, and he had done some independent work. He was friends with Percy Pringle. Percy really was high on Bob. That's how he got the job in in as sparky plug eventually the next year in the wwf um but that's bob was his full-time job at this point was as a welder and he lived uh <clears throat> down in in mobile and so he was making a significant trip to come up and uh, you know and do the smoky mountain tv and and house shows and he was riding up because robert gibson was in northern alabama at that point uh so he's riding up with robert but anyway, the thing is, I wanted to use Bob Holly because I'd seen him do those jobs on Atlanta TV, and he reminded me and he was one of those guys from Alabama that kind of moved around at that time like Bobby Eaton. He did a lot of stuff off the top, or it was knee drop or the elbow or splash or whatever. He was a smaller, thinner guy then than he would become. And he his work was very good. He could take bumps. He could sell. He could work as a baby face. He could work as a heel. He was vicious as a heel, you know, on offense. And he just, he's one of those guys you could just tell he got it because he moved around the ring right. He just had that body language. <clears throat> so he's a great worker and has no idea how to talk and has no personality established for himself because he's always been Bob Holly from fucking Mobile. So beautiful Bobby Eaton is, is who he reminded me of. So beautiful Bobby Eaton, Hollywood, Bob Holly. This is, see, this is what you did in the old days. You just give a guy something to start out with because it's better than what he's got, which is nothing. And if something clicks, then it's great. If not, he goes to another territory and he finds something else till he gets it right. And since Bob had had no, uh, discernible gimmick so far. Okay. Hollywood, Bob Holly. He's a fucking redneck from Alabama, you can tell by his voice. But he is and it kind of like the Buddy Landell principle, which got over in Knoxville. A fucking redneck country boy bragging about how fucking big time he is. Because everybody knows one of those in that part of the country. He's Hollywood Bob Holly, and he knows all the fucking stars. Well, we know he ain't talking to Jack Nicholson, but if 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 Bob Holly saying he talked to Jack Nicholson, got as much heat with the wrestling fans as Paul Lee saying he talked to Jack Nicholson got with me. 
And then there's some, and and he didn't he didn't have any you know ring jackets or anything. He had a, a fucking windbreaker. <clears throat> so I had this woman in Knoxville for two hundred bucks make him a pink and black robe with the feathers, so he could be you know beautiful Bob Eaton, Hollywood Bob Holly. Brags about being in Hollywood and hanging out with all the stars. He gets the ring. He can actually do some shit. And then we'll see where it goes. And it didn't go very far because at the time, Bob's, I I don't know his domestic situation, but I know whoever his significant other was at that point thought that he ought to either concentrate on wrestling or welding and welding was making more money. But so he had to quit the Hollywood Bob Holly gig uh, but then the next year, Percy was able to talk him into uh, getting a, a shot, and they liked him in the WWF, and he's, it was there for however many years after. Were you surprised when you showed up to a TV taping one day and there's Thurman Sparky Plug? Well, I wasn't surprised, but I was disappointed because that fucking goofy fucking, I figured here's another T.L. Hopper or whatever, the tra- Freddie Joe Floyd, take a great fucking talent, put a stupid goofy gimmick on him, He was just happy to be there, but then later on, he was able to get over with his work and just to, you know, being Bob, uh, to where that he was able to strong arm himself out of being Sparky Plug and become Bob Holly. So that, that I was happy about. I was always happy to see him there. I just, I didn't like the gimmick at first. So this is 1992. He works for you as Hollywood Bob Holly, early 92. And obviously the Heyman incident, I'm guessing, would have happened either late 88 or early 89. This is a few years after the fact where Heyman mentions running into Jack Nicholson. This story was still fresh on your mind? Well, I'm just thinking of what's uh, what's some fucking bullshit that this heel can say to brag about being uh, connected in Hollywood to all the fucking hillbillies. And of course, you know, and it, it just, it just came up in my head. Ah, fucking Jack Nicholson loves you. Whatever. Our next question, Jim, was sent into Bob, Bob, I will say Bob was not an accomplished public speaker at that point. And he, he delivered some of these with all the fucking vim and vigor of a fucking hostage video. <laughs> um, and say, here's the thing. It wasn't him. We later on would see what Bob Holly was, but then he was a long haired kid from Alabama that, you know, was a good worker and, you know, and welded. Uh, But later on, as he grew up, a puppy with big paws, he turned into more of himself on television. But that was something to start with, basically. 